Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white vampire tribal deck featuring Edgar, Charmed Groom as our commander, the 4-mana 4-4 four four legendary vampire noble from Crimson Vow, giving other vampires we control plus 1 plus 1, and when Edgar dies, instead of sending it to the command zone, we can transform it into Edgar Markov's Coffin, a legendary artifact saying at the beginning of our upkeep we can generate a 1-1 white and black vampire creature token with a lifelink, and then we also put a bloodline counter on the coffin, and with 3 or more counters it transforms back into Edgar Charmed Groom, which can attack right away, and of course we'll pump up all those vampire tokens. So taking a look at the rest of our deck, all our creatures are vampires. At one mana we've got the Sky Marcher as a 1-1 flyer. We've got the Aspirant, which is a 2-1 that can also gain flying with the City's Blessing. The Aristocrat can sacrifice a creature to put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire we control. 1-1 Lifelinker itself, so that's also a way to potentially sacrifice Edgar if we actively want the Coffin instead. Then Knight of the Abel Legion is another great one drop that we can sink a bunch of mana into to make it bigger, and will passively pick up plus one counters if a lot of life is lost. Then a Vampire of the Dire Moon, a 1 1 with Death Touch and Life Link. At 2 mana, we've got Adanto Vanguard, which is very difficult to kill for some decks as we can pay for life to make it indestructible. The Martyr of Dusk, as well as Carrier Thrall, leave behind a token when they die. The Dusk Legion Zealot draws a card when it enters the battlefield. Null Priest, a 2 1 with a Menace and Life Link that can be kicked later in the game to reanimate a creature. The Oath Sworn Vampire is one we can replay from our graveyard if we gain life in our turn, and plenty of Life Link in the deck. Then the Voldaren Bloodcaster, 2 1 with Flying that can generate blood tokens if our creatures die, and just a great card in general even if we don't have a ton of blood synergy. Then the Cordial Vampire puts a plus one plus one counter on each vampire we control when it or another creature dies, that also includes the opponent's creatures. Then a Gifted Aetherborn, just great stats as a 2-3 with Death Touch and Life Link. The Lieutenant will give our vampires plus one plus one, and Metallic Mimic gives a plus one counter to other vampires that enter the battlefield under our control. Then at 3 mana we've got Mavron, generating a 1-1 lifelinking vampire token whenever a non-token vampire we control attacks. Great combo with the welcoming vampire as well, a 2-3 flyer that will draw a card whenever a creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under our control for the first time each turn. Also plays well with the vampire tokens we generate from Edgar's coffin. Then the Kalos Blood Mage will typically draw a card at the cost of 1 life when it enters the battlefield, but has some additional utility. Silver Smote Ghoul, another nice recursive vampire that will come back if we gained 3 or more life in our turn. Vito also rewards us for gaining life as it will translate that into additional damage, can also give the entire team life link for 5 mana. The Bloodthirsty Aerialist, a 2-3 flyer that picks up plus 1 counters if we gain life. We've got Drana, a 2-3 flyer with first strike that will put a plus 1 counter on each attacking creature we control if it deals comma damage to the opponent, so thanks to first strike we potentially get the benefit of those plus 1 counters right away during regular damage. Then the Nighthawk Scavenger is at the very least a 1-3 flyer with death touch and life link that gets bigger with a number of card types in the opponent's graveyard. Then Indulging Patrician, a 1-4 flyer with a life link that can deal additional damage if we gained 3 or more life in our turn. The Mark of Purifier, a 2-3 with a lifelink, that can draw a card at the cost of 2 mana at the end of our turn if we gained life. Then we've got the Faceless Agent as a 2-2 changeling that also counts as a vampire, that will seek another vampire when it enters a the battlefield. Then at 4 mana we don't want too many cards because of course we can cast our commander at 4 mana, but some must-haves include the Blood Vile Purveyor, a 5-6 with Flying and Trample that can potentially get bigger. We've got Henrika with a lot of useful abilities, including making each player sacrifice a creature, can draw a card with it, and eventually transform it into the Infernal Seer, a 3-4 with flying, death touch and lifelink that can pump up additional creatures we control with those abilities. The Sanctum Seeker can drain the opponent for each attacking vampire we have. Then Elenda is a 1-1 with lifelink that picks up a plus one counter whenever another creature dies, and when Elenda dies we generate X 1-1 white and black vampire creature tokens, where X is Elenda's power, so also plays well with anthem effects. Then at 5 mana we've got Westgate Regent, a 4-4 flyer that has a ward, making the opponent discard a card if they want to target it, and then if it deals combat damage to the opponent we essentially double its power in the form of plus one counters. We've got Drana that can return non-legendary creatures from our graveyard if she attacks, a 4-4 flyer as well. 
and then a Champion of Dusk, a 4-4 that when it enters a battlefield lets us draw X cards and we lose X life, where X is the number of vampires we control, so a great way to refuel and we can offset it thanks to all the lifelink creatures in the deck. And then a singular 6-drop with the Haunt of Hightower, a 3-3 flyer with a lifelink that when it attacks makes the opponent discard a card, and whenever any card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Haunt of Hightower. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, mostly have some removal and other interaction, and one mana also Legion's Landing, generating a 1-1 white vampire creature token with a lifelink, and if we attack with three or more creatures we can transform it into a land that can generate additional 1-1 lifelinking vampire tokens. Then Swords to Plowshares is a must-have removal spell in pretty much any white deck. Bloodsheaf's Thirst can also be kicked to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. Dark Ritual especially effective when we're ramping out some of our planeswalkers. Then we've got Thoughtseize as a bit of hand disruption. Then at 2 mana, Rally the Ranks will bump up our Vampires by 1. We've got a bunch of spot removal with Feed the Swarm, which can also tag enchantments, as well as Heartless Act and Infernal Grasp. We've got D Spark, which can exile permanents with mana value 4 or greater, as well as a Vanishing Verse exiling monocolored permanents. And then we've got a bit of Ramp with Arcane Signet and Cold Seal Heart, which also fix our mana. And then Power of Heroes is a nice one, as we can sacrifice a vampire to search our library for a vampire with one higher mana cost. So we've got a lot of vampires with Enter the Battlefield abilities, and that's also the reason why we have that one Haunt of High Tower as a top end 6 drop we can potentially search up. Then at 3 mana, we've got Sorin Imperius Bloodlord, can cheat some of our vampires into play with a minus 3. Also great with some of our recursive vampires like the Silver Smote Ghoul or the Oath Swarm Vampire, as we can sacrifice them, deal 3 damage, and get them back. Arterial Flow makes the opponent discard 2 cards, and we also get to drain them for 2 if we control a vampire. Vrexen Arena for more card advantage. Etchings will give our vampires plus 1 plus 1, and we can also sacrifice a vampire for 1 mana to make a creature indestructible until end of turn. Then Icon of Ancestry also pumps up our Vampires by 1, can activate it to search up a Vampire in the top 3, and then Angadim's Awakening can be a land or a way to get back a bunch of creatures from our graveyard. And then at 4 mana we've got Crippling Fear as potentially a one-sided sweeper, a couple Sword and Planeswalkers, this one generates 2-3 lifelinking flying Vampire tokens, can also provide card advantage with E plus 1, and then Soren Vengeful Bloodlord gives the entire team lifelink in our turn, and then we can also reanimate creatures with it. And Call to the Feast generates 3 1 1 vampire tokens with a lifelink, great with the various anthem effects. And then we've got Vanquisher's Banner as our final anthem effect that will also draw a card whenever we cast a vampire. And then our lands are pretty straightforward. A few of the utility lands include Phyrexian Tower to generate extra mana if we sacrifice a creature. We've got Hive of the Eye Tyrant as our only creature land, and Castle Lochthwain can also provide extra card advantage. And then Voldaren Estate can generate blood tokens and becomes cheaper to activate if we have more vampires in play. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Clothis, God of Destiny. This hand's not gonna cut it. This is still not great, but probably keepable. Hopefully pick up some cheaper vampires in the meantime. And then I'll happily scry here. Now we're looking for lands. Next turn, probably going to draw with the Blood Mage. A Bard class could be nice. Right, got a bit of removal. So, probably just playing. Edgar next turn. A one mana Clothus thanks to Bard class, and it's very close to being a creature as well. Ambush kills our vampire. Okay. Well, 
Luckily there's no window for Clothis to exile Edgar, as it all happens at sorcery speed. Ooh, Primeval Bounty. That's a powerful one. Not many ways for us to destroy enchantments. Couple of our multicolor instants, and I guess we've got the uh, destroy a creature or enchantment in black. Okay, so what to do about Clothis? Can always kill a creature to decrease their devotion, but I think we're better off playing a 5 drop, and then which one? Tempted to play the banner first, since this is shaping up to be kind of a grindy matchup. And Drana is not going to have much to get back from the graveyard. And then we'll keep Edgar back. If the game stalls out, we've got a card advantage engine going in our favor, plus Icon could also come in handy. But Primeval Bounty is certainly a scary card. Ravager Worm. 5-6. Not quite large enough to destroy Edgar. Alright, now the Welcoming Vampire. Not the best combo with all the Anthem effects, but that's okay. What's next? Probably wait a little bit on Champion until we have a few more Vampires in play. Do we need to keep our life total in mind too? So, I could double spell Welcoming Vampire and Icon, but that also means taking three more from the Awakening, which is maybe not worth it, so maybe I do just play Champion with two Vampires, plus we get to draw from Banner. That's probably enough. And then play this tapped. So we've got some large Vampires in play. Opponent just slowly draining us with Clothis. And they can level a Bard class. But currently they're on empty. So the card advantage might be able to take over. So next up, kick things off with a Sky Marcher. Would not be triggering the Welcoming Vampire anyway. And yeah, we'll just unload a couple more creatures. I guess getting some flyers going is not a bad idea. Dark Ritual. Probably fine to use it here. Although it's not the most mana efficient, I guess I can play Icon with it and still play 2-drop. So we're starting to combo off thanks to our Vanquisher's banner. And it's not going to take many attacks to kill them in the air. The lifelink should keep us alive. So I'm liking my spot. Rada triggers Bard class, so now our opponent can start comboing themselves. Find some pretty good cards too. Sylvan Anthem puts three plus one counters on a creature. And then Scavenging Ooze is going to make sure the graveyards stay empty. And Scavenging Ooze can potentially exile Edgar before it gets a chance to transform into the coffin. So unlike Clothis, that does work. For now, definitely want to play a Mavern before attacking. So I guess we'll start there. Thirst could be useful too. Might want to take out Arada or Scavenging Ooze. 
can hit for quite a bit in the air. Maybe I want to go digging with Icon. I guess our opponent can also use the Labyrinth here to prevent a bit of damage. Send the Flyers. Or just play Drana and keep the graveyards empty so Clothis doesn't have anything to exile. Partners, gonna be quite good here, especially if they can put plus one counters on it with Primeval Bounty. Bard class finds more goodies, so yeah, opponent's gonna get to combo off here. So the partner's gonna be the target of removal here in a second. They still have the mana to play Gergroth. Which also has reach, but so do the partners, so our next two removal spells are gonna find some good targets. Should be able to survive an all out attack. Got some big lifelinkers on defense. But yeah, this Gargroth is not messing around. So, kill partners, kill Gargroth. That's six mana. Still enough to maybe play Phyrexian Arena. Or a Cordial Vampire. Getting kind of low on life. Opponent's got a lot of beasts, so might have to play the extra creature here. Start there, I guess. Ooh, Pyre. Pyre could open up some fun lines of play. Could get my Haunt of High Tower if I sacrifice a 5-drop. Could get a 1-drop by sacking a token. Opponent does appear to be tapped out, so they cannot exile Edgar if I sacrifice him and get a 5-drop. So, quite a few options. But it feels like I still need to kill the Reach creatures here. Get to grow our team. Flyers get to attack. And that's probably it. Could have maybe tried to set up some fun combos with Pyre and then Drana getting back a creature right away. Since the opponent couldn't exile anything in response but can maybe save it for next time. Yeah, the Bard class is doing a lot of work. Bonus got more legendaries than it seemed at first glance. Kogla can kill a creature, then maybe deal with my artifacts and enchantments. So, game is far from over. Ram through for more removal, so they can take out quite a few creatures here. Opponent has to deal with our flyers, luckily Cordial Vampire can uh, put more counters on the team here. Unless they wanted to kill the Cordial Vampire first.
altar for more counters. And they can still ramp through. Which deals with Drena. So as the dust settles, we only have one flyer remaining. But all our creatures are quite large. No attacks from our opponents. So can I kill them here? Only if one evasive attacker. Anything I can search up with my pyre is a question. Anything that drains the opponent, veto comes to mind. So do I have enough to sacrifice a two drop? Yeah, that seems like that's gonna be the play. Sacrifice probably the cordial vampire here. Get veto. And then I could even give the entire team lifelink, although we've got plenty of lifelinkers already. There we go. And move to combats. And that should get the job done. So even if they have enough blockers, they're still going to die to Vito's ability once our lifelinkers deal damage. Alright, that was a sweet game. Lots of back and forth. Both decks got to sort of combo off, but Vito ends up deciding the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Torrents, so a creature token deck, and uh, our hand's pretty decent can potentially ramp into our 5 and 6 drops if we sacrifice a creature to Phyrexian Tower. Not gonna play too many non-creature spells into the Esper Sentinel for now. Get to see one of the new alchemy cards, Captain Aberhart. So... What's next? Blood Mage draws a card, probably, so we can hit our land drops. Could also make a token to then sacrifice the Phyrexian Tower. I think I would still rather draw a card here. Next turn we can already play Edgar. Edgar seems fine. At some point we can also sacrifice Edgar to Phyrexian Tower if we just want the coffin to generate a few tokens. Asika's Chariots just makes a one cat now. Still pretty good. I'm probably not going to see any attacks. Okay. So, a couple options here. Don't mind just playing Patrician and a tap land. Could play a Vanquisher's Banner, but then the opponent gets to draw off Sentinel as well. So, yeah, let's keep it simple. Flyer attacks, play another flyer. Could also decide to kill the cat token to maybe deny them copying it with chariots. But I'm okay if Edgar trades for chariots. And 
And then do I want to draw a scavenger? It's not bad. More flyers seems like a good thing, so sure. And we'll pass it back. Alcatra's a scary card, so probably want to kill that with my Thirst next turn before they can make too many 4-4s. Four they still don't have any great attacks, because the 2-5 could also just block the Chariot. Now the Scavenger is a little bit more expensive because of the Captain here. Could also go for Banner, sacrificing Blood Mage if I want to deny the card draw of Sentinel. But killing Oketra seems like the most straightforward play. Opponent's gonna crew Chariot first, that's fine. And then the question is, does the Patrician attack? I think so. Point is pretty low. Can probably win the race. Yasharn yeah, prevents sacrifice, so that stops my Phyrexian Tower. Can search up some lands, but that does shuffle away Oketra if they do. So don't have to worry about Oketra showing up anymore. They could attack with Esika's chariots. Don't really need to trade for Edgar since we're just winning with our flyers. Alright, that's a big attack. And a fateful absence on Edgar, pretty fitting. Let's not send it to the command zone, so we can transform it instead. And then... Do I want to trade here? I guess I do. So this is gonna end up being pretty close. Yasharn, I think, also prevents us from sacrificing any blood tokens. So that's interesting, too. If I play Banner, then our opponent gets to draw off Sentinel. I think I can probably wait on that and just play Scavenger. And then I can't even sacrifice a clue because of Yasharn, so that's a good combo with the Fateful Absence. Okay, send in our Flyers and... Hopefully kill him next turn. Caretaker resolves. Doesn't kill any of our creatures or block our flyers. I'm fine jumping with a 1 1 if needed. So, with one mana remaining, unless they've got a pump spell here, we should be okay. I guess our opponent does have snow lands, so Blizzard Brawl could be painful. Goes all out. Let's 
So I could block the 2-2. Two -two. And then the creature dealing the most damage is the 3-3 three -three double strike. Although if I block, I don't get to gain any life. So I guess it's still worth it. This way I take 12. If I jump here, I would take slightly more. So we've got just enough here with the banner. GG's, close game. Just gonna make sure to name the right creature type. I suppose we also would have gotten there with a Patrician's ability as we gain three life and deal three additional damage. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing the Scarab God, so blue-black control deck. Our hands, okay. Can be pretty aggressive, maybe transform an early Legion's Landing. And turn one, what do I want to play? Probably Legion's Landing. All right, next up we can double one drop, but let's start by attacking. All right, opponent Doom Blades or Flyer, so we won't be able to transform landing to play four drop next turn. But a couple more one drops will do nicely. So let's get in there. Yeah, that one gets countered. And then we get to scry. And do I want an icon of ancestry? It's not bad. Sure, I'll keep it. Next turn we can decide between Henrika and Icon, or even play Edgar. So quite a few options. Karn's going to plus. And they can have, I guess, the untapped lands. Could see the hull being relevant later. So we can kill Karn by playing an Anthem. And then I guess I don't mind Edgar dying and transforming here if they have a sweeper. Landing transforms as well. I will be better prepared next time. And if they play Scarab God, Henrika will line up perfectly. Alright, opponent goes for Scarab God. And they're not going to be too happy to see Henrika here. Make each player sacrifice a creature. Scarab God dies. Opponent is pretty desperately behind on board. And we're pretty resilient against the sweeper as well. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Facing the first sliver. This is Sliver Tribal. This hand is... not bad. Especially if we can hit a couple land drops. Doesn't apply a lot of early pressure though, is the problem. Hmm, maybe against the first sliver we need a slightly more explosive start. So we'll try free mulligan. Having an answer for the first sliver is also good. Yeah, this hand's not bad. Not doing much on turns one or two. But uh, scavenger plays well with veto. Purveyor can deal a lot of damage. And then we can answer the first sliver if that shows up. Generally want to play Swamp first since we do have quite a few double black cards in the deck. Ooh, Vanguard was a great draw.
opponent deciding how to sequence their mana, which is an important skill in a 5 colder deck. Silver Smoked Ghouls, also not bad. So the decision here is between Scavenger and Ghoul. The Ghoul deals a little bit more damage. Scavenger could line up better against potential first strike creature. And then Scavenger also plays well with Veto. So I might go Scavenger first anyway. Alright, Power Ward kill. Take that out. The Ghoul might have been able to come back from the graveyard, so different sequencing might have played out slightly better. Opponent's got the Paradise Druid, so next turn we could see the first Sliver. Would love to play a Purveyor here. Opponent's still pausing with one mana. Maybe a Lightning Bolt or a Source to Plowshares. So we can play Purveyor. Just going to attack first. Alright, they did have the swords. Great answer to Adanto. They were maybe keeping it for Edgar instead. But now I get to play Purveyor. So some good early removal from the Slivers deck. Haven't seen too many Slivers so far. But time for the first Sliver. Would love to draw another land so we can double spell next turn. Alright, there we go. And then it's actually interesting whether I play Veto or Ghoul. Because a Ghoul might not do much if our opponent has more ground creatures coming up, whereas Veto I could activate next turn to maybe just kill the opponents by doubling the damage output from Purveyor. Opponent down to 13. Yeah, if they don't have removal here, Purveyor could easily kill them with Veto. It's gonna be a predatory sliver. Makes another blood token. Four mana remaining. Spiteful sliver. That's fine, so unless they've got a Lightning Bolt for Veto here, I think we've got it. No need for our commander here. So that's 18 damage with Purveyor plus Veto. And there you have it, so battle through some early interaction, but Purveyor plus Veto get it done. All right, we're on the play, facing the partners. So red-green plus one counter, aggro deck. Hand is not amazing, very light on creatures, in fact, no creatures, but uh, could play out reasonably well in this matchup, since we have a bit of spot removal, a ramp to empty your hand quickly, maybe play Adgar and then start drawing with our castle. So we'll see how this plays out. Don't expect to exile anything right away, so I'll play this tapped castle since we don't have a swamp, and then everything else come, come into play untapped. Signet into probably our vampire here. Alright, Karyotids could play the partners next turn. I might want to wait for them to play partners to exile it. And then for now... 
I could make them discard, I could play a Danto Vanguard, which seems slightly better. Yeah, I guess that's the play. Fine with the trade here. Now they could have a way to protect their commander here, if they have one of those hexproof instants. Right, it looks like they're gonna take a different approach. Also, Lith can store up those plus one counters, but we're gonna hopefully prevent them from getting any counters. So now, could make them discard or we can play Edgar. Can probably still wait a turn on the discard. And then play Edgar. And then I want to keep up Swords to Plowshares mana, so this seems fine. So I'll put a stop here, so we can exile the partners before they get any counters. They do have a Mox Amber, which they can make mana with. All right, the Rapier, I guess we'll let them equip it first, and then uh, exile it, and then our opponent's gonna be pretty sad. Get to untap. Sorin's not bad. Didn't think we can quite kill them here, but we're getting close. So probably a good turn for Arterial Flow. Could also play Sorin. But probably fine just playing the one drop. They get to keep one card. The Goose and Mox Amber not making any mana at the moment, so... This was quite a blowout. So next turn, Sorin can also deal three damage directly to the opponents. Vivian's not bad. Probably not going to be good enough, though. So turn the team sideways, should get the job done. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing an Ajani green-white deck. My hand's kind of slow, lots of 4-drops, not much going on early. So I think we can do better. This is better. Don't think we're playing Awakening as a spell. Turn 2. Probably go for Arcane Signets, and then Alanda combos nicely with the Pyre of Heroes as well. also play Zealots and play Pyre. And then a turn after Agent, sack Agent to Pyre, get a 4-drop. Luckily no Snowlands or expensive non-creature spells to worry about. Yeah, I guess I like that line of play. Esper Sentinel, not going to draw them too many cards. So let's go for the Agent, get a 4-drop. Haven't really decided which 4-drop to get. 
Henrika can make each player sacrifice a creature, sacrifice zealots. Yeah, it seems fine. Opponent keeps Sentinel, which does pair well with the Jani once they put a few counters on it. But our opponent has seen enough. Well, we were gonna have some fun here. Next turn, the Pyre could maybe sacrifice Henrika after getting more value from it, and then we can maybe get the Champion of Dusk and eventually get the six mana flyer. So we would have had a pretty good game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing a Karizef Monorad aggro deck. So Phyrexian Arena, not the best. I do like Veto, but the rest of my hand's a little questionable. This is better. Not the best matchup for Adanto Vanguard. But at least we've got some early creatures to play. And a rally at the ranks to pump them up. Could also go for Signets and ramp straight into our commander, which is also tempting. There's Karizev. And then... Yeah, playing Adgar doesn't seem bad here. Let's me attack with my 2-1. And then we've got a blocker for Ragavan. If they have a burn spell to finish off Adgar, that's okay. Alrighty. So what's next? Could play a rally so this can keep attacking. Do I send both? And then I could play a Vanguard, which is going to be pretty large as well. Seems fine. So despite facing Monoret, we're being the aggressor, thanks to all our Anthem effects and the early pressure. And yeah, opponent has seen enough. So blazing fast starts, beating Monoret. Alright, so got to see our black-white vampire deck in action. And the deck's pretty decent. Overall, wanna try and not get your commander countered, because once it's in play, even if they kill it, you can usually transform it and get some more value, but if it gets countered, of course, you're not going to get the coffin, so just got to pick your spots and make sure to resolve it, and then hopefully the early vampires can apply a bit of pressure, and we've got some heavy hitters and sources of card advantage to help us in the late game. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Let me know in the comments which Brawl deck you would like to see covered next, and I might get to it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.